Sound advice to keep your body and mind in perfect harmony. You're tuned in to the Dr. Stephen Show. Now, here is Dr. Steven Eisenberg. This is like a dual podcast extravaganza. I love it. It's a party. It's going to work or not. (laughs) It's a party. This is the Dr. Stephen Show and Zestology, the dynamic duo. This is Tony Wrighton on the Dr. Stephen Show. And. And Dr. Stephen on Zestology, and you were one of my first guests. I mean, it's ages ago that we spoke. It must be four or five years that we first connected. And I've followed your career ever since. So when I saw you, you had a book out, I was very (laughs) excited to um, sort of chat about it. And just congratulations, by the way. Well, thank you so much. And and likewise, when life is a bit meh, you need energy. I mean, I I know you've done many books, but but I... um, you know, I could use a little energy right now. I mean, um, having being on Zestology back in the day when when the songs for patients was just ramping up and yeah. it that sort of led. That was one of your 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 uh, podcast was one of the things that led to this book coming out in three weeks. Like it's coming out very soon. It's 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 called Love is the Strongest Medicine. And I think you embody that, you know, you, your book is about bringing love to yourself, self care. And when you have energy to have energy, Tony, you tell me to have energy, really, you got to, you got to bring love to yourself by sleeping, by eating. And, and your book goes much deeper than just what to eat and how to exercise. You tap into the soul and the spirit as well. I, and I would love to hear about um, how do people love themselves? Because my patient said to me, and you remember the story, how are you going to take care of all of us, Dr. E, if you can't take care of yourself? And she changed my life. Her name was Flavi. She changed my life because at the time I was a stress ball. I was a walking zombie of an oncologist. I wasn't taking care of myself. I had no energy. Stress was killing me. And I needed when life was a little meh, you need energy. I needed that back then. Tell me, tell me what, what, what are some things that people can do right now if they're feeling meh? Because I think the world is really, we're coming, we're coming a little bit out of this horrible pandemic. There's so much mess still in our world. How yeah. do we come out of it, my man? Well, I mean, the, the, the great thing about writing and creating and podcasting and everything else is that I think most people tend to find that they end up creating content that they could kind of find quite useful themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's, <so laughs> uh, that's, true. Definitely, that's definitely the case for me. You know, I mean, I go into, into the book why I need books on energy, and that is because I contracted this tropical virus and I didn't have any energy for ages and you know affected me very badly I was in bed for a few months what did you have well I mean that's that that's the interesting thing and you will know but I didn't know this don't say dengue yeah yeah well it turns out there's loads of viruses that are so exotic that they haven't really been given a name and Mm. you know the the doctors could tell from my red blood counts I think that I'd had a virus and Mm. I had some sort of post-viral syndrome but they didn't they didn't know what virus it was you know um And it was a very slow, tortuous route back to health. Oh my and God. obviously now I do this podcast on energy. And I think, you know, what the podcast and the book do is they combine fairly superficial look at the things you can do to biohack your health and environment, yes. along with a deeper look at, and that's why I really enjoyed chatting to you last time. You know, energy can mean a lot of different things, can't it? And actually yes. it can be quite deep when you think about the energetic forces that exist between oh, people yeah. and, and how you tap into a deep sense of energy. I feel um, your energy yeah. across the Atlantic right now. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Because we're, we, it's, it, energy does have to do with connection, yeah. connecting to our deeper selves, connecting to those around us, being present to what your body's telling you. Yeah. And that is that's what I call love is the strongest medicine. It's loving yourself, loving who you're with, looking them in the eyes, listening before you just wait your turn to talk, observing what your body's telling you rather than escaping. We all like mm. to escape through addiction 
and uh, you know, uh, Netflix, phone, blue screens at night rather than turning off the screens and getting rest. And I'm guilty as anyone, but I need these nudges, right? Yeah. It's all about, when I write a song for a patient, it's simply about nudging them back, nudging them back to re the realization that they are not their disease, they are not their cancer. And just the way you learned through, through a lot, trial and error, and, and it took you a long time, you are not that virus. You had that virus, but you were the one who overcame it and, and you could notice what was happening and you could transcend it. And that yeah. took a lot, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really interested in, you know, the these the unseen forces that can provide a massive amount of energy. You know, I, I have this sense that what we understand about energy and energetic forces that come from things like love is absolutely nothing compared to what it will be in 50, 100 years time. And, you know, Agreed. when you were talking just then, I was thinking about this. There's a very famous, there was some sort of chi Qigong expert, I think, who was in one city. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about this experiment? And there were four different Petri dishes with cancer cells in them in another city. And he sent healing vibes to one Petri dish. And after 30 days, this is in a different city, the healing vibes had meant that the cancer cells had disappeared in the Petri dish yeah. that he had been thinking about. Yeah. How, do you, how can you explain that? It is it's a, it's a force that we don't understand. But presumably that's why it's so important when you're dealing with, you're an oncologist, yes. but you understand that the underlying attitude yes. will help more than anything. I yes, I, I, it does. It does because the mind-body connection is so vital and it's psychoneuroimmunology. It's energy work and, and it all has to be part of it. It all has to be part of it. You know, Louise Hay, you mentioned her, and God bless yeah. her, and, and God rest her soul. She was amazing. She worked with AIDS patients back in the 80s when there was really nothing. Now we have amazing, incredible medications, or there's no viral load anymore, and people live a normal lifespan. Many, many, many millions of patients can just live a life with, with HIV. She was working with people with energy and forgiveness and that you could, even though you were dying, you could forgive yourself. You could love yourself. You could have love around you. And even if you died, you could die with love. You could die on your own terms, surrounded by love because you had this energy around you. And now we're doing the same thing. Medicine's getting better. Even in oncology, we're, able, we're doing immunotherapy, something like melanoma, stage four melanoma in the brain, in the brain. Now we're giving immunotherapy. We can, we can shrink it out of the brain, the lungs. You can live with melanoma a normal life in many, many cases. But it's, it's medications, but it's also the energy and the love around you. You've got to connect with those around you. And it is it your your thoughts and your emotions affect your immune system. I'm talking about immunotherapy, T cells. When we give you this drug, it we're training your own immune system to recognize the cancer and go after it. Yeah. But your own immune system is also affected by your thoughts, your feelings and your emotions. Mm. Your cortisol levels when you're stressed when you're stressed, your immune system is blunted. Your immune response is blunted. Your T cells go down. When you're laughing, when you're connected, when you're expressing yourself, your immune response goes up. So would you rather help the immunotherapy along or would you rather it, you know, you're, you, you could, it, it may be that it's, it's not as robust. So well, that, that's really interesting you say that because I've been wanting to ask you about that. Obviously, now is a great time for your book to come out because we've been in this horrendous pandemic for the last year and a half. And of course, as well as the fact that people are physically getting sick and suffering, um, we're not doing all the things that you just mentioned. You know, we're not loving and laughing and doing loads of exercise and 
spending lots of time with our best friends, having Sunday brunch or whatever it might be. And actually, it's been harder than ever to do that kind of self-care. I wonder mm-hmm. what your perspective is on, you know, how much we all need to remember the, the, some of the things that you were just talking about. This is what I say to that. And beautiful question. I say, connect at all costs. Connect like it's life and death, mm. because it is. Because it is. And I'm not saying that to scare anyone, but isolation is, is deadly. Isolation is deadly. And technology can be a wondrous, miraculous thing when used properly to connect with people. I think FaceTime and, and Zoom and, and how we're doing this, it saved lives as well as you know, it, it, it really allowed people to connect in a time when you had to stay at home. And I really believe that when used properly, and it really, really helped, it really, really helped connect and seeing those patients and seeing those people that you loved more than just on the phone, seeing the smiles and being able to look into a patient's home. When I was doing telemedicine, all the time. Now I'm, I'm maybe 70% in person, 30% telemed, telemed. But when I was able to see into a patient's home, I had to learn new ways to connect. I'd be like, Ethel, tell me about that picture of the dogs playing poker over your head. When did you get that? Like, I love that. Oh, show me your puppy. So they'd bring their puppy on the camera. And so we had to connect in new ways. Mm. And you get to see into their lives. You get to see their homes. And now when they come in, I go, hey, you know, I remember, I remember that, that mosaic you showed me over, you know, over your left shoulder. And we have these things to talk about. And I do believe in my heart of hearts, the shared love, the shared humanity impacts our health in ways energetically that you mentioned. And we will learn more and more about this as time goes on. But you know who's been talking about this forever? It's people like Deepak Chopra. It's people like Wayne Dyer. That we are, may, we are just more empty space than we are solid molecules. Like we are, right? We are energy. We are atoms colliding. But we think that I'm that I'm this this solid thing sitting here, and you're that solid Tony over the Atlantic. But really, the way we're connecting right now, our molecules are like flying over the Atlantic and somehow impacting people from California to London. Right now, those listening, they're having endorphins flowing, they're feeling some joy, they're feeling some connection. And if we can be a beacon, you and I, and say, connect to someone you love today, listen to them from love, observe their eyes, verbalize from love and empathize with whatever they're going through without having to change them or fix them. Just get them where they're at. We have to accept people where they're at. We like to fix and change everyone, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, and I think there's there's something else as well, which is our sensitivity and stimulation levels are so high it's such a oversensitizing time Mm. our sympathetic nervous system is on such red alert we've all read so much news and we know exactly what has happened with the virus at every stage Mm. i think it takes quite a long time to come down from that to actually Mm -hmm. just genuinely just come down to a different place and i think even now certainly in this country things are starting to ease and things are starting to get better a lot of people can't come down. Well, they, they, at... they, they're, fun, they're struggling to get rid of that anxiety. And I notice it in myself sometimes as well. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention our brothers and sisters in India right now. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. And we have to stay vigilant and we have to stay connected to ourselves in a way where we embrace stillness. We have to embrace stillness. Ryan Holiday has a beautiful book, Stillness is the Key. And I know you talk about this in meh, when my life is a bit meh, you need energy. Part of having energy is being able to restore yourself and to revitalize yourself. 
And that's where stillness comes in. That's where meditation comes in. I like to, and I struggle with this. You know, the first thing I like to do when I wake up is to put the pillows behind my lower back, sit up in bed straight, just my lower back, my head is up, and I'd like to meditate. And I like to do it first thing in the morning. And what I struggle with is not picking up this first and looking to see, was there an emergency text overnight? Yeah, what? That's, that's hard because you need it for your job. I do as a doctor, I do. But if I wake up early enough, the person on call overnight, if it's not me, is still on call. So if I wake up just a little early, you know, the, fi- the miracle morning, and I, I, I don't wake up at 5 a.m. No, no, I wish I could. For all you that do, God bless you. And it's amazing. I try to wake up, you know, as early as I can and, and be able to meditate in the morning. I think that the, you, for me to get some certain things done before I go to work really help. I like to jump on this little Bellicon tramp and, and, you know, jumping. Tony Robbins jumps on a tramp before he goes out and does one of his million dollar talks. So I got one of these tramps. And it's really good for you. It, ba- it gets your immune system going. It gets your lymphatic drainage going. I highly recommend it, especially if you're old like me. It's not bad for your joints. Oh, you jump up on, and down. Dr. E, you're not old. <laughs> oh, man. You know that, you know that SNL sketch? Um, I, Mary, Margaret, or so she goes, I'm 50 years old. I'm a superstar, 50 years old. But, uh, you know, I think that We can stay young by laughing and loving each other. And health and wellness are so intimately connected to the energy that you bring to your relationships. And that's that's not being isolated. That's you have to connect every day. And it's a creation. It's a creation, isn't it, Tony? You can't, you have to make it happen. You have to create it. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely i totally agree yeah you gotta you gotta put the effort in yeah um, that that is for certain yeah yeah i think the i, I, I certainly wrote in the book about the, the phone in the room thing you know i mean it's like i said it's not a particularly groundbreaking you know the idea is that my book has sort of radical ways to revitalize and re-energize and i said this isn't that radical but leaving your phone out of the bedroom is a pretty good idea and the other thing that's not that radical is not checking your phone on the loo. <laughs> <Because everybody laughs> does it. Oh my god! <laughs> Especially everybody when does it, yeah. but just give yeah. yourself a bit of space, you know. But actually, it's funny because when I did start to leave to leave the phone just downstairs at night, yeah. it's it's a relief to go to bed and not have any tech around. And you're right. There's there's no way when I go to bed with my phone in my room that I'm not going to check it first thing in the morning because I don't have that level of self control. It's too addictive. It is. So it's been quite, it's, that's been quite a change. And in fact, I was just telling you, you know, it's a, my small, modest publishing company um, started to yeah. do very well over the last year and a half. And awesome. it's very addicting because you can, you, you can log in at any time of the day or night and see how many books you've sold. Oh and I was finding God. it so addictive because a lot of the sales come in in American time in the middle of the night when I'm asleep. Right. So I'd get up and I'd check in the middle of the night. And that, is, <laughs> that is so unhealthy. So what's now the, I can't. What's your publishing company called? Well, it's called Kitoka. Well, the, 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 the company is called New Rules of Health. Um, cool. And we've, uh, we've got a sort of publishing imprint called Kitoko Guides. And, and we've been writing these books on histamine intolerance and employing a load of experts from around the world to write recipes um to put some medical knowledge in there um it's an area that is quite underexplored yeah i take um, an antihistamine every day me do you yeah every every day all every through the day year. all through the year all through the i've had allergies my whole life i take uh zizel every single day zizel well you know I, I'll, I'll send you a copy of the book because there's the, we've got the second and third best-selling books on histamine intolerance in in the world um, awesome. So one is histamine intolerance explained and one is histamine intolerance cookbook. But I'm, I'm a bit like you because 25 years I had all these unexplained symptoms and it actually had quite an impact on my quality of life. Um, oh, and it yeah. would really manifest in the gut as well when it, every once in a while I just couldn't understand it. Mm-hmm. And then I found about this con- concept of histamine intolerance. I know we're not really talking about histamine intolerance today, but I 
just thought I will eat low histamine for three days just to see if that helps. And honestly, within about an Ooh. hour, I felt amazing. Right. That'll, <laughs> and that'll within probably three days, help me. Yeah, I mean, and then, I mean, ever since, I've never had the same level of symptoms. I've felt so much better. It's just a massive release for me. So, so then I dived into it and, you know, started writing these books. I love it. it. Were you yeah. taking antihistamines before? I would, yeah, yeah, I would take antihistamines. But, you know, this is one of the interesting things about a lot of experts in this world seem to think that if you take antihistamines for too long, you they actually start doing the opposite of what you want them to do. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. <laughs> I need this book. You better ship that right now when we finish. Well, you know, sending you my address. From, yes, I will happily do so. And from a medical perspective, I'd love to know what you think. Because, you know, I think a lot of doctors don't really know much about histamine intolerance because most people don't. And so I would love to know what you think. Firstly, yeah. I, I had to employ some serious experts to kind of go through the books because i wanted them to be a good resource that they're sort of fact checked and they've got scientific references all the way through good. but it was important to me because you know i'm not a doctor um and then i would just love to know what you think because the great thing about histamine intolerance is you don't need to take a test you just eat low histamine food for three days and see if you feel better yeah but there's also some supplements aren't there isn't isn't a quercetin quercetin yes. isn't that a wonderful supplement for this as well yeah. And maybe um, um, N acetyl, uh, what is it? N acetyl something. Uh, yeah, N acetyl cysteine. I don't take that, but I, ta I don't ever take antihistamines now. Although I might for a month during the hay fever allergy season coming yes. up. But um, I take quercetin every day and I actually take it in the middle of the night. Ooh. Um, and I pair it with vitamin C. And that's quite nice. Oh, I'm going to try that. Now, can you tell me a few of the, the more radical ideas for when, when my life is a bit meh, you need energy? Because, yeah. uh, you know, when, as you know, when you're gearing up to have your book birthday, your launch day, there's a lot of stress. And I'm, you know, I, I, I'm feeling a bit meh. I, and I could use some. Can you help me with a few radical ideas? And I know they're, you know, I, I'm not saying they're they're crazy radical, but what I mean is, um, what's connecting? What's really connecting with people out there from the book? That's not just every person on Instagram talking about every single day. Yeah. Well, as I said, it's it's biohacking. Yeah. which is the sort of day-to-day -day hacks that you can put to practice straight away. Yeah. And then I combine it with NLP, which is my background in neuro-linguistic programming, Ooh. which is making it all stick. So, you know, the biohacks are the sort of, you know, it's, it's anything from oh, free hacks based around getting more sunlight in the morning to yeah. um, what have I got here? I've got, I've got a um, air purifier. This is unbelievable. I mean, you with your, with your allergies will be fascinated by this. This is one of the most, smallest and most powerful air purifiers in the world called Ooh. the Air Angel. So powerful that it has been proven to clear coronavirus, COVID-19 from surfaces Whoa. in four hours. So that's pretty good. You keep that, that by you? You keep that by you when you're working? I, I just use it at night. I put it on before I go to sleep. At night, okay. Yeah, yeah, put it on at the corner of the room. And um, it would take any dust and allergies and, and mites out of the air. And uh, it's, it's, it's nice. Do you know, the first time I used it, it felt like a cool forest. I was like Ooh. breathing in cool forest air all night. It was lovely. I love this. Yeah. I love this. So get, 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 um, get, be aware of histamines and histamine intolerance, air purifiers. What else? You know, I there's a, there's a big section on nature because I, because connecting mm. more with nature is not a particularly radical idea, but often it's hard for us to um, to actually you know I mean for instance today I've been in my TV job this morning yeah and I got there at nine in the morning there's no windows there's no windows in the studio so between nine and three I saw no daylight whatsoever that's not a very natural way of existing. Mm -mm. And of course, no. it's not very good for your circadian rhythms. No. So we talk about, you know, getting outside. I, I talk about the, um, the American uh, author and poet, uh, Tony Morrison, who used to um, get up and watch the sunrise at five o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, you know, that's lovely. But in London, 
it's normally dark at five o'clock in the morning and it's right. raining. So, you, so, <laughs> so you want to get outside as much as possible, but then you might look at using an infrared light when, yeah. you, when you on those days that you can't get outside. In the but I, I notice those beautiful skylights over your left shoulder. Yeah. It's not too bad today. It's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yes, so, a nice morning yeah. walk, a nice morning walk while still having your overnight fast can be can do wonders, can't it? think so yeah i mean i that's um you know look, i've looked a lot at movement and um we you know again in, in my book we i kind of quote science throughout which is which just added so many months of pain to actually writing the book <laughs> but was so worth it and you know we, uh, there's a famous alzheimer's doctor called uh, dr dale bredesen mm. who um who was the number one author of on all of amazon for three days uh, but I, I, hope, I hope you get that as well when your book comes out. Um, but yeah, literally number one out. I think he was out selling Hillary Clinton and Oprah for three days. Oh my, that's um, all right. And what what was the message? I mean, he's th this man is absolutely incredible because you know, despite all of the pharmaceutical invention interventions over the last thirty years, Alzheimer's is still very very hard to treat. My grandmother had it. My mom's mother. Really. It was yeah. devastating, and it's so hard on the caregiver. My mother was her caregiver, and it was so hard on her as well. Sometimes more hard because my grandmother was, you know, in her own world and yeah. wasn't noticeably suffering, but, you know, didn't really know who we were. And that was so painful and hard for my mother, the caregiver. So what did he say? Yeah, yeah I mean, you'd love his book, The End of Alzheimer's. He has about 30 different ways that he treats his patients on a non-pharmaceutical basis mm. so it's it's everything from the diet which is like 10 i mean to be some to sum it up it's like low carb loads of vegetables not much meat yeah um load of supplements a lot of vitamin c a lot of quercetin loves quercetin, Love quercetin methylation and b vitamins you know really really hot on that and then all these sort of things that we've been talking about. And he says there's nothing pharmaceutically that has ever been proven to work as well as exercise. Mm. And what they've done is they've mapped the brain and they've mapped the inflammation, the inflammation of Alzheimer's in the brain before and after moderate physical exercise in seniors. And it's incredible. I mean, the, mm. the inflammation literally shrinks after this exercise. Jeez. And if there is any research that is more likely to actually make you go out and go for a walk right now i don't know what it is because right. that is just like so inspiring isn't it does he talk about walking or does he talk about burst x you know these these well in seniors it's hard you mean what what can you do as a senior you have walking is i i was just talking to someone and they said there's nothing better than going out for a good walk and just to push yourself a little right you can walk a little faster for a couple seconds like sprint walking you know like okay i'm walking and then for for 10 seconds i'm going to pick up the pace and yeah. just get my arms moving a little bit faster like that's huge yeah that's yeah, he huge talks about, isn't he talks it about two different things he talks about what like all, a lot of moderate exercise um but then he also talks the specific research that he says basically worked better than any FDA approved med medication was a, a lot of uh, seniors, I think they were in their 60s, I think they were showing the first signs of mental decline, whether mm. it was Alzheimer's or something else. And they were doing slightly more than walking, but it wasn't like sweating yourself to failure on the on the exercise bike or in the gym or whatever it was, but yeah. it was a workout. A workout. Of, of sorts. Yeah, it was like a moderate workout. Yeah. Um, and I think it was like, I think it might have been 45 or 60 minutes, but I can't exactly remember. Yes, anyway, I quote, yes. quote, the, quote the research in there. But in anything's anyway. better than nothing. Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Anything's better than nothing. Yeah. And um, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you about um, when was your life a little bit meh? When was your life a little bit meh? When was it when... Was it when you came up with the Zestology podcast? When did you, how did you come up with the idea for the book? Yeah, I mean, well, I certainly 
you know, when I had that virus and I'd oh, yeah. of work, my life was a bit meh. And then yeah. Zestology was my journey towards sorting it out. And then about a year ago, you know, I mean, lockdown has been tough for everybody. And I think we, yes. I, I feel very grateful in the way that me and my small family have dealt with it, actually. Yeah. But I, I wanted to write about something that I, I felt like, I felt like it'd be good to get this book out as soon as possible, actually. And obviously, it's not that quick getting a book out, but I really wanted to try and get it out because I do feel like it's something that a lot of people can help with. And I know when you read or listen to something that is infectious and inspiring, you know, really, really inspires you. I mean, before this, I just did another podcast interview with um, a minimalist interior expert called Shira Gill. Ooh. And she specializes in sort of decluttering your home and your life. <laughs> yeah. And it's great, you know, and I love that. And I'm, I'm by nature a very untidy person, but I love talking to her. And I went straight downstairs and tidied up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love, I love when I can clear off my desk. Yeah. It's so freeing. It's so freeing. It's like a metaphor for your brain, isn't it? Mm. You clear mm. off your desk and you're now there's something you can, you, yeah. you're, you can expand your mind a little bit. But, um, but so you've got the book coming out in three weeks and you're fe you're feeling the pressure a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm doing some, I'm doing some, some spots on, on uh, TV and uh, uh, you know, they, they just asked me to be on the doctors, you know, that show in America called the doctors. Right. I don't know. Do it sounds, sounds big. Oh, it's yeah. It's cool. It's cool. So I'm going to do a little spot there and, you know, I just want, I really, uh, I believe in the message. I believe that, that this world needs, needs love right now. We need to love each other. There's so much hate going on, especially in America. So much hate, so much division. And, and love is the strongest medicine transcends just oncology. It's, it's a metaphor for connecting with your brothers and sisters no matter who they are love thy neighbor as thyself this is you know it's it's when flavi told me how are you going to take care of all of us if you don't take care of yourself it's like me saying to everybody how are we going to love each other if you can't love yourself yeah and so self-compassion self we've, we we'd like to beat ourselves up we love to beat ourselves up oh i shoulda woulda coulda if only I had invested in Bitcoin 10 years ago, if only I would have worked out, then I wouldn't have had this cancer. Or if I was, you know, if I it, only if I hadn't eaten McDonald's, then I wouldn't have this 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 Crohn's disease or whatever it is. The first thing I tell patients is there is no room for the blame game. The past you is the past you. You've got, we have to learn how to let that go and create ourselves from our future selves. Who's the future Tony? Who's Tony? Who's the Tony of 10 years from now? Who's the Tony in 2031? Who is that hero? Who is that hero Tony in 2031? And to live into that possibility every day. That's really what this book is about. It's when you can when you can forgive yourself and love yourself then you can truly connect with who you're with and love like crosby stills and nash said love the one you're with <laughs> and that's you that, showing your age <laughs> that's that, i know i am right it's being present it's being present that's all we have and so Yes, you might be dealing with chronic disease, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. You might have been diagnosed with cancer. What, but whatever, whatever led up to that diagnosis, well, there's, there's a lesson in that. But then we, we, I say, face it, embrace it, and replace it. You've got, you've, you have to you know, be present with it, embrace it, give it a hug, and then release it down the stream and then yeah. what is what opens up after that and that is that easy no that's the hardest thing in the world that that's the thing of zen zen monks to be present zestology how do we have energy in the present moment how can we connect truly with who we're with with who we're looking at 
this, these, are, these are the hardest questions in the world to answer. What's the meaning of life other than being who you're with and being fully who with yourself and who you're with right now? And not going back and beating yourself up. Oh, now I've, I caused this cancer. No, you didn't cause this cancer. You didn't cause your disease. It happened. And now we're going to move on and we're going to do what we need to do now. So we live into that future version of ourselves from a powerful place. And when I say connect, we create powerful partnerships. Tony and Steven, right now, we're a powerful partnership. We're, we're taking meh. We're bringing love to it and now we have energy yeah yeah well said yeah yeah you know what I mean? that's what we need at the moment for sure yeah yeah i think connection is really important isn't it and um that is the absolute key and of course that's the one thing we haven't been able to do over the last year mm -mm. so um i it's... just started hugging my little old ladies again because that's the that's when that's the thing that that they always end every visit with they said mm. well Thanks for the good news, Dr. E. Now, where's my hug? And, <laughs> and the, I'm not leaving without my hug. They, you know, they, they, that's, that's the last thing. And it's been crazy, you know, just not being able to hug yeah. my little cadre of little old ladies who want the hug more than anything else in the visit. Mm. That's been crazy. And now we're, we both have masks. We're both double vaccinated. I turn this way, she turns that way, and we're hugging. Lovely, yeah. That's and they go, oh, I feel the endorphins flowing through my brain. Like they just love, I mean, it's, it's true. It's true. And they missed it so much. Mm. And so did I, so did I. It's funny, isn't it? Because that is just such a basic, you know, I mean, it's, it is difficult because I think when I've talked about radical ways to re-energize in my book, some of these radical methods have been around since time began. And on first, I mean, you know, Qigong, massively into Qigong, for example, it's not exactly like a new technology. Um, but hugging also does not sound radical. But for a doctor to hug their patients, that actually is quite radical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... I prescribe it. I prescribe hugs. I prescribe laughs. I'll say, who's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite funny movie? Okay, I'm going to prescribe you need to watch that before our next visit. I'll and and I do prescribe Western medicine, but I also do it with a bunch of Eastern medicine as well. Because I think it's what I call the best of the best. It's the best of the best, the best of science and the best of nature, the best of the spirit. And that's what you do. And when my life is a, is a bit meh, you, you take the best of science and the best of nature and spirit that is scientifically backed. And, and we're seeing that now. I, I recently put in turmeric and cancer in a PubMed search and a thousand results came up. The, inf the anti-inflammatory effects of turmeric and its benefits for cancer patients. This is an Ayurvedic herb that's been used in for thousands of years. And now finally we're like, whoa, this can really help cancer patients. So yeah. when my patients come in and they bring a huge bag of supplements, I go through each and, each and every one because you know I worked in a health food store during med school to make a little extra money. And my, my, all my friends would make fun of me. They'd be like taking no dose to pull an all nighter. And I'd be like, guys, no ginseng. Yeah. ginseng this, siberian this ginseng thing, like, siberian yeah. ginseng like that was that's what i was taking because i was learning every herb every supplement every spice in this health food store in the early 90s well i think that's one of the great things about what you do because i think people listen more i mean doctors there is there are probably no more respected people in our communities than doctors so it's all very easy for you know, slightly out there, woo-woo biohacker like myself to say, hey guys, you know, vitamin C. But actually when it comes from a doctor who's got all the rigorous backing and training that you've got, and then to say, do you know what? Might be worth looking at turmeric as well. That's when it has a real impact on people. Yes. And I think that's that's really great that you're doing that. But that's part um, of, yeah. yes. 
But I think, yeah. and, and, I, and thank you for saying that, but that is the powerful partnerships. It's not my way or the highway. And that's where I think doctors get into trouble. And that's where I also I think the doctor-patient relationship is severely damaged. Because guess what? Patients are going to do it anyway. Behind your back. They are going to do what they want. They're going to get acupuncture. They're going to take every damn supplement they want. And that third naturopath has prescribed for them behind your back because they're afraid to tell you because you're going to scold them or fire them as your patient. And is that workable? No. Is that love? No. Love is, okay, let's, let's work this out. Let's see what supplements you're on. Let's call your naturopath while you're in the room. Let's see what might be interacting with your medications that I give you. Is there a few we could stop? Is there a few we could, we could say this one really makes a lot of sense? Maybe this one a little bit less? You're already spending $200 a month on all these supplements. Could we save you a few bucks? Which ones really are helping? Does it take a little bit longer? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Will it help you prevent burnout as a physician? Yes. Will you love what you're doing more? Yes, because you're connected. You get reconnected to why you became a doctor in the first place. We all say, I want to help people. And then we end up hating our jobs because it's the paperwork and it's this all day. Yeah. Yeah. I when I give a talks on burnout, I go, hello, Mr. Johnson. Welcome to the office today. I don't look at you. I just... Oh my God, sorry, Mrs. Johnson, you're, you're Mrs. Johnson. You're, yeah, I don't even know you're, I don't even look at you. So I don't know that you're a, a woman. So we have to reconnect. We're, doctors are drowning in paperwork, drowning in, in online records. And I've, uh, this book, part of the book is about healing the rift, healing the doctor-patient relationship that's been broken and that is just drifting. Patients hate their doctors, doctors hate being doctors. I wanna heal that, I wanna mm. heal that. One out of every two doctors in primary care is burned out. Burned out, meaning they don't like it, they wanna stop, they wanna quit, they have stress symptoms, they're not sleeping, they're going to alcohol and drugs to cope. That's family practice, internal medicine and ER. And I'm sure it's that way in the UK, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less because of the UK health system. But in, in, in the US, it's one out of every two. And they could use, they're, they're a lot meh. Medical doctors in the US are a lot meh and we have no energy and are killing themselves at an alarming rate, higher than the national rate of suicide and more women physicians than doctor physicians. And it's nuts. So we have to turn this around with books like yours, with love, with connection, with rediscovering why you wanted to be a doctor in the first place. How do you do that? You reinvent, you reconnect, you reinvigorate. You go deeper into the connection with the patient, not the opposite. We're trained, keep a healthy distance, don't connect. That's the wrong thing. Yeah. It's get closer, let them know who you are, share who you are, share what you love, what inspires you, and they'll share back. And then you're like, this vicious cycle turns into a virtuous cycle. Wow, I can make a difference for people. Yeah, I like I what I do again. I think that's, yeah, yeah, that's obviously so important. Now, Dr. Steven, I have a, a small human, but I'm making some calls on my time. So I think this this but this is almost the end of the podcast. I've got to let you go. He's he's not a respecter of podcast uh, <laughs> of, of the podcast art. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Yeah, well, I, yeah. this was such a pleasure. Yeah, and I like, want to likewise. thank you for having me on and coming oh, really, on. So good to talk again after I can't remember how many years it is, but I think at least five. Yeah, for so, sure. Um, so I'm I'm very excited about the book. Where is it? Well, it's available everywhere, isn't it? Because I've seen it everywhere. Amazon, it's yeah. everywhere. Love is the strongest medicine. Um, you can get it also at drsteven.com, Dr. Steven with a V. And you, when you pre-order it, you can you get lifetime access to the Cancer Fight Club, which is my private Facebook group for cancer support. 
That's awesome. And we're gonna we're gonna teach the we're gonna teach the lessons in the book, and it's called the Cancer Fight Club. Come and join that, Tony. Thank you so much. I love Zestology. I love you. I love when life is a bit meh. You need energy, and okay. I can't wait to uh, talk soon and for you to uh, give me feedback on this this upcoming book. Yeah, I'm really excited. So um, I, I'll, I'll look forward to to reading it and uh, all the very best. I'm sure you will maintain your vitality levels in uh, in top notch over the next few weeks. Zestology. Thanks to you. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Bye. There's a doctor named Steven Eisenberg down San Diego way. He's got a didgeridoo and man, you just got to hear him play. When his people come in for chemo, he knows they'll be upset. He picks up that didgeridoo and plays music they can't forget. Dr. Steven, Dr. Steven Eisenberg, Dr. Steven, woo, Dr. Steven Eisenberg, Dr. Steven, Dr. Steven Eisenberg.